We live in the information age. From communication to shopping to finances and even to work, we digitally handle most of our interactions through websites and apps. And a lot of times it's on the little bitty devices that we have in our pockets. And even though the bulk of our information is digital, we need to supply that information to the websites and applications that we use. Now, as a developer, the thought of building a system to handle all of these different types of media is daunting because in order to provide any level of meaningful functionality, well, it needs to be able to handle images, documents, audio, video, and of course, all of the different formats for those media types. But then it also needs to be very simple to use. Now, if you're like me, you don't have the time to implement, test, and then harden a system. So thankfully, one already exists. It's called FileStack and more than 100,000 applications trust FileStack to handle file uploads, transformations, storage, delivery, and so much more. Now, I want to use the term content management system when I talk about FileStack, but that conjures up a completely different concept. This is not a competitor for WordPress. It is not a blogging engine. This is a platform for uploading, storing, transforming, and delivering files. But if that's not managing content, I don't know what that is. And anytime that your application needs to handle files from your users, then you can integrate FileStack into your application and they make it very easy to do so. Of course, if it's a web application, that's the easiest thing as you'll see here in a few moments. But if your application is a native iOS or Android app, they also supply the tools necessary to integrate their file uploader into your applications. And then once a file is uploaded, you can use their web API or their client library to work with the data that was uploaded. So before we start playing around with all of that, let's take a look at the pricing because cost is a very important part when looking at any new service. Of course, there's the free tier, which is practically the free trial. Every month you get one gig of bandwidth, 500 uploads, 1000 transformations, and just one gig of file storage. Now bandwidth is calculated based upon when files are viewed or downloaded. Uploading files are not included with the bandwidth. Of course, you are limited by the amount of uploads that you can do per month. And for most applications, you're going to want to at least go with the start plan. You of course get more resources, but you also then get the ability to store your files on some other public cloud providers, such as Azure, Google Cloud, Amazon, Dropbox, Rackspace. Or if you need more resources and more features, the Grow plan can give you access to more of FileStack's components, like the Document Viewer and Slider. You also get access to the Transformations UI which makes it a lot easier to transform your files. And then of course there's the scale, which gives you practically everything. And one thing I do want to note is the scale plan gives you virus detection, which in today's day and age, that's very important. But if any of these plans doesn't meet your particular needs, you can also build your own custom plan. Now for this video, we don't need anything like that. We just need the free plan. So go ahead and create a new account. It's a straightforward process, and best of all, it does not require a credit card. And after you sign in, you will be greeted with the dashboard, which is going to give us all of the information that we need to get started. Now, before we do anything else, we do need to make sure that you have everything that you need to follow along. So the first thing you need is Node.js. If you don't have it installed, now is a very good time to do so because while you might not necessarily use Node itself, you will probably use NPM, which stands for Node Package Manager. So you would just want to download the LTS version that stands for long-term support. The version number really doesn't matter as far as our purposes are concerned. So just download, install it, take the defaults. It is a straightforward installation. It would also be good to have a code editor. And I personally use Visual Studio Code, especially when it comes to working with JavaScript, because there's no better code editor for JavaScript than Visual Studio Code. I know that that sounds like an opinion. It's not. It's fact. 
And the great thing is that it is cross-platform. So if you're on Windows, Mac OS, or Linux, there is a distribution for you. And so once you have Node installed, you will need to hop on over to your command line and you will want to, first of all, make a directory. Let's call this simply file stack. We'll want to CD into that new directory. And then we're going to run a command called npm init dash y. This is going to initialize our project. And once that is done, we are going to run another command called npm install light dash server. And then we want to end this with dash dash save dash dev. That means that this is going to be what is considered a dev dependency. It is a dependency for development purposes, not for actually running the application or putting it into production. There's nothing that is going to be considered production about this little example. And once light server is done installing, we want to fire up our code editor and we're going to modify the package.json file because we need to uh, add a new script here. So inside of the scripts object, we're just gonna call this serve. And then the value is simply going to be light dash server. Be sure that this is a valid JSON, otherwise you will run into problems. And then we want to create a new file. We'll call it index.html. Hit the exclamation point followed by tab. And then we have our boilerplate HTML. So now that we have this HTML, we need to integrate file stacks upload component. So let's go back to the browser and we're going to click on this integrate file stack file picker in your application. This is going to take us to a website that will show us how we can integrate the web file picker, or if you are developing a native iOS or Android. Let's go ahead and open those up just so that you can see. They go to a GitHub repository and there is documentation on how to install the file picker and use it within your project. And these of course are official. These are not third party components. So here's the Android repository. Once again, same kind of information walks you through installing and using it within your application. But for our purposes, we are going to use the very easy JavaScript file picker. We just need to copy this script element, put that inside of our HTML file. And then it also gives us some code that we can call to get this started. So let's go ahead and let's do that. We will need to add another script element so that we can add that JavaScript. Now, if we were to run this in the browser, we would see the file upload picker automatically open up. We do need to specify our API key. So that is from our dashboard over kind of in the top right-hand corner, we can see the copy API key. You can add a new API key. If you have a paid subscription, you would be able to create more API keys for whatever applications that you would need. So with that API key, we want to pass that to the init method. And of course it needs to be a string value. So make sure it is a string. And then we want to run our application and we can do that from the command line. We'll say npm run serve. That's going to start up light server, which is a lightweight HTTP server. And it's going to automatically uh, navigate us there. So there is the file picker. Now by itself, it really isn't going to do anything except allow us to upload a file. If we want to get any more information about the file that we uploaded, we need to write a little more code. What we want to do is supply an options object that will have a callback function that will execute whenever the upload is completed. If we go to the documentation, we can take a look at that. So let's look at the JavaScript documentation here. We can see that there's the picker response and there's the structure of the data that we will get back in here. We can see that for each uploaded file, picker file metadata object is created with file details, unique handle and CDN URL. This object can be accessed using callbacks. So let's look at the callbacks. There's quite a few here. 
And the one that we want is upload finished, that right there, because that is called when a file is done uploading. So let's click on that link and that's going to take us here. But if we just keep on clicking links, we'll get to the information that we need, which is right here. We can see that it is going to call that on file upload finished method, and it's going to pass in that picker file metadata. Let's go back to our code. And what we want to do is specify that on file upload finished callback method. And it's going to accept that file metadata object. And then we just need to do something with this file information, which I think we could just write it out to the console. And that's going to be just fine. Ideally, in a real application, we would, of course, want to actually do something with that. But in our case, this is going to be fine. This is going to show us the uh, response that comes back from the API. And that way we can play around a little bit more with it. Now, since we have this options object, we need to supply that to the picker before we open it up. That way it is properly initialized with the options that we need. And that should be it. So we just need a file then to upload. And we can use just about any kind of file. It could be an image, a document, audio, or video. But uh, a document would be the easiest thing to create on the fly. So let's just create a text document. And this can be a test for file stack. And then let's save this as file stack test.txt. And then we need to upload that. So let's go to the documents and then we will do that. We'll just drag and drop. Now you can see here that there are other options. We can upload a document from our device, or if we have a URL for that item, or we can use a web search if it's on Facebook, you can see that there are many other options that we can use to upload a file, but this is going to be fine. And you can see that it is showing information about the files that we want to upload. I say files, we could add multiple files here if we wanted, we're just going to stick with the one. And if you needed to do something when the user adds files, uh, we are just using the callback for when the upload is finished, but there are other callbacks. If we take a look, there is on file selected. So if we needed to do something when the user selected a file, then we could do that. I don't really know what kind of information we would get, but that is an option there. So let's pull up the developer tools so that we can get access to the console so that whenever we upload this, we will see the response. So there it is, we have our object. Now, the important thing here is the handle because the handle is essentially the unique identifier for the file that we just uploaded. And you can see that it is used in the URL. So if we wanted to download this file or view this file, we can of course use what's here in the URL, but we would need this handle in order to do that. But you can see that there's other information here as well, like the content type text plane, we can see that it is 33 bytes and that it came from our local file system. It came from our machine as opposed to Facebook or Google Drive or something like that. So let's grab this URL and let's open it up in the browser so that we can at least just see the contents of this text file, which isn't really going to be much, but we can see that it is indeed the text file that we uploaded. But let's say that we wanted to transform this and we can do that on the fly by just manipulating the data that we supply in the URL. Like for example, if we wanted this to be a PDF, then we could use an output processor and we could say that we want the format to be a PDF and whenever we do that, we are going to see that it is going to return a PDF. We could download this. So let's take a look at the URL here. All we did is added in this segment here. We said that we want to output this text file as a PDF. And all of this is in the documentation as well. If we go back 
And let's take a look at the transformations, the processing engine here. So if we look at the documentation, we are going to see that they give us essentially the same kind of information. If you have an image, you can resize that by just supplying the height and width in the URL. But somewhere we can see, ah, here we go, the API reference. So we can look at the processing API and we can see the other options that are available. Like for example, here we can see that uh, this particular file is being output as a doc, a Word document. But also look at what they're doing here. This URL is for processing a file that is not stored in FileStack. It is stored elsewhere. So you not only have the ability to transform content that is supplied and uploaded through your application, but if that content resides elsewhere on the web and it is accessible to FileStack, you can transform that very easily. And that's pretty freaking awesome. And so there you have it. FileStack has the performance and features your application needs to handle any type of content. With FileStack, your application can easily upload files to be transformed into other formats, and it can deliver that content reliably with unparalleled speed. Getting started is fast, free, and easy, so get started today.